Association of Endocrinologists and Diabetologists uh, since 2014. Uh, beside that, she is a professor of medicine, of eternal medicine, endocrinology and diabetology at the University of Skopje School of Medicine. Uh, she is a board member of IDF Europe and she is executive board member of many uh, study groups, especially including uh, diabetes educator study groups because uh, her passion is uh, education of people with diabetes. And it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce our new president of uh, the uh, diabetes educator study group of EISD and my good friend, Professor Tatiana Milenkovic from Skopje, from University of Skopje School of Medicine. Uh, she will speak about very interesting topic about diabetes, uh, emotions, and uh, decision making. So it wasn't easy uh, topic for you, and it, it will be our pleasure to uh, to listen your talk. And I'm quite sure that there will be lots of questions afterwards. Please, Professor Milenkovic, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you so much, uh, respected chairs, for your kind uh, introduction and respected colleagues. First, I want to thank the organizers, especially Professor Ina shout out for the invitation to be part of this so important conference. And today I would like to share with you uh, this topic, which is maybe not as attractive as uh, cardiovascular outcome trials, but I think so that is a very important one because it uh, affects a psychosocial life of uh, patients of diabetes, which is really a uh, very important uh, part of, of their life. So, uh, by the definition, what is the decision-making process? Uh, well, it is the act when we are deciding between uh, maybe more than two, sometimes alternatives, in each field on in every uh, context. And uh, some decisions are really easy uh, to make, like, for instance, to choose uh, some of these different foods for a breakfast. Uh, because this decision, it actually, it will not impact our life seriously, because the other day we can choose something other. But some decisions are really very difficult to make. For instance, to choose a major to study, or how we will be build our career, or even how we will find a husband or a wife, because these decisions will impact our future life. And uh, there was a question uh, many years ago, is there any uh, influence of emotions or our uh, process of decision making? And in the 19th, in the last century, there was a, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, work that, uh, that was able to demonstrate that it is uh, the affectivity and emotions and decision-making process that they are really highly, uh, highly inter-reliant between them. And uh, why is this so? Because there is no aspect of our mental life that is more important uh, to the quality and uh, especially to the meaningful of our existence than our emotions. So that's why uh, in different situation, we are reacting very differently. It depends on our family, of our personal uh, history, of our beliefs and expectations and values. And that's why many people in the same situation, they, they have uh, quite different interpretations, different emotions, and that's why our behavior is really uh, different uh, in the same situation. And then uh, it is very, really well known that our physical health, our thoughts and our emotions are the main drivers of our behavior. What about the patients with diabetes and uh, what types of, de of decision our patients with diabetes have to make? Well, uh, diabetes decisions, uh, uh, it is really uh, it is a big part of self-management of diabetes and uh, it is really uh, pity because we are not discussing this very often. 
because the patients with diabetes, there was a, uh, one research from University of Stanford that shows that the people living, especially with type one diabetes, they are making even 180 health-related uh, dis uh, decisions more than someone uh, without diabetes. So this is really a huge amount of decision that they have to make uh, during a day, even uh, to make about one, once every five minutes, they have uh, to make one decision when they are awake. Well, even in early in the morning during the sleep, if they uh, uh, if they have uh, early hypoglycemia, they have to make decision how to copy with this situation, even their brain still being asleep. So it's a very difficult for patients of diabetes because there is a lot of lifestyle activities that need their attention. They have to think on a daily basis what food to eat, how many of that food, then uh, what kind of regular physical activity they will have, uh, how they will measure their blood sugar, and even most important, how they will interpret that measure and adjust their treatment. So really, this is uh, so many so many uh, decisions and so many activities that they are different uh, from uh, the other people without diabetes. So really the daily life of patients with diabetes is so complicated. Every, every, every day, in a, every hour, they are making so many, so many, many important decisions related to their health. And that's why we have to put ourselves very often into their shoes in order, in order to understand how difficult is life to those people with diabetes, especially with type 1 diabetes, because uh, they need insulin uh, for every uh, single thing that they will eat during a day. And it is really, uh, really difficult to live like that all their life. So uh, we, uh, we need, uh, actually, uh, the, the people need um, the developed cognitive function uh, to face this pers persistently changing environment and uh, uh, we need uh, to have exec executive functioning and also working memory in order to copy with this process of decision making. What is uh, actually executive functioning? It is consists of collection of different cognitive function including attention, ability of problem solving, verbal reasoning, inhibition, mental flexibility, multitasking, initiation, monitoring of action. And even more important, it is a work executive function because it is not enough just to hold some information about something, but it is very important how we are manipulate this information. For instance, uh, the people with diabetes, they have to judge about the carbohydrate content of their food, but this is not enough. They have to calculate the insulin that they need to cover these carbohydrates in order to maintain um, normal glycemic control. So uh, the, main, the most important question is what can influence this process of decision making in our patients with diabetes? when firstly it is the neurocognitive deficit and different pathophysiological changes in the brain, uh, then misinterpretations of some somatic clues uh, that can happen when there was a autonomic neuropathy uh, and our patients cannot recognize their hypoglycemia, it is very scaring for them, this hypoglycemia unawareness. And finally, existence of comorbid uh, depression. Uh, but uh, firstly, we can, uh, we have to uh, understand what is emotional dis distress uh, and how to separate this from depression. Because emotional distress, it is not a psychiatric disorder, but it's rather uh, an affective state which results of this uh, really complicated life of patients with diabetes that can uh, very often uh, uh, make our patients to feel scared or anxious and something, uh, sometimes even angry. Uh, and this can lead to burnout of, of these patients. And uh, that's why 
this emotional distress uh, makes healthy behavior changes very difficult and it can lead to poor glycemic control, then to more hospitalizations related to diabetes, uh, three times higher incidence of coronary artery disease and retinopathy, and, f and finally, uh, two times higher risk of mortality. Uh, that's why we, we, we should uh, tailor uh, our approach to these patients quite uh, individually, and uh, here, the uh, special education and motivation uh, and uh, um, it, it is very important to help uh, the patients how they will overcome uh, these problems and how they will make a real uh, decision related to, to their health. And I, I just want you to show you this very uh, good trial that it shows how the education for this problem can help patients uh, to better solving their problem. And it is uh, this decide program or decision making education for choice, choices in diabetes every day. This was a trial from uh, USA uh, with aim to, to compare the effectiveness of three different modalities uh, of decision making education for choices on diabetes every day. And it was uh, designed like uh, nine modules, uh, literacy adapted um, diabetes and cardiovascular disease education and problem solving training compared with an enhanced usual care on clinical and behavioral outcomes in patients with uh, type two diabetes. Uh, so on this slide, uh, you, can see, um, uh, you can see here that uh, um, uh, the side modalities uh, and enhanced uh, usual care did not uh, actually significantly different in clinical outcomes after six months. But what was important was uh, this, that uh, all arms improved in uh, problem solving, uh, in problem solving uh, six months after intervention. And uh, these two arms of uh, self-study and individual had a higher increase in knowledge related to diabetes in comparison to enhanced usual care. And this study usually, uh, uh, I mean, uh, shows that uh, this uh, educational uh, approach with uh, education for decision making, making actually can help uh, the patients to, uh, to make a better decisions related to, to their health. Um, this, the, the, other, the other problem of, of uh, this, uh, of, uh, the other uh, hand of this problem is uh, psychiatric disorders. And it is well known that in patients with diabetes, uh, they have a very low detection rate. So uh, almost 50% of those uh, psychiatric disorders, they are not recognized uh, and not treated in patients with uh, diabetes. Uh, they are not treated and recognized, but they are really quite uh, often because the prevalence of depression of patients with type 1 diabetes is three times higher than in those without diabetes. And uh, in patients with type 2 diabetes, they have two times more uh, prevalence depression in comparison with those without. Uh, and the women are those that are suffering from depression more often than men. And um, because the rate of depression in general population is about two, three to five percent, and in people with diabetes is 12 uh, to 23 percent, diabetes is well known as a depressogenic uh, uh, condition because uh, mm, it is uh, these problems in people, uh, in, uh, in life, uh, in people with diabetes, uh, make them to be prone to develop uh, depression in their life. And um, when, uh, when diabetes and depression coexist, so they can uh, worsen each other. Uh, depressed patients uh, are less likely to adhere to the treatment, and that's why depression is associated with a really a uh, big burden uh, of symptom of poor glycemic control, uh, then more uh, diabetes complications in patients with diabetes, 
And uh, this is uh, also interaction between depression and complication because patients with diabetes uh, that are depressed, they are more prone to develop diabetes complications and vice versa, those with complications are more prone to develop, to develop depression. So uh, that's why this comorbidity of diabetes and psychiatric disorders is really common uh, with many different presentations. And as I say, uh, it is under-recognized. Uh, if there is a proper psychological approach, this can improve uh, therapeutic adherence and prognosis of diabetes in patients with these disorders. And of course, that patient education, engagement, and empowerment are quite essential components that can help uh, in care of patients uh, if of patients with uh, diabetes uh, um, to, to better solve their problems and, and depression. And what is the conclusions? I would like to say that uh, the, pa the patient with diabetes, they quite often suffer from different neurocognitive deficit. And uh, this is associated with poor metabolic control. So there is an other contributors to this poor glycemic control as a, a neurocognitive deficit that hypoglycemia and awareness comorbid depression. Uh, and uh, I think so that the recent, there is a, a very interesting uh, state of the art functional neuroimaging, uh, which can reveal how the brain reacted to hypo and hyperglycemia, it can find out which of these situations can really uh, damage uh, the cognitive function of uh, the brain and um, maybe this can help the patient, this new knowledge uh, can develop some new kind of treatment strategies to help this patient to copy uh, with their disease to make better uh, decisions related to, uh, to their, to their diabetes and in that way they can improve, uh, improve the prognosis of, of their disease. So thank you for your attention.